The Macintosh MA352 that you can see sat there behind me is not a new amplifier. It was released, I think, back in 2020. And I remember receiving the press details, looking at the images, and I really struggled with the amplifier's visual design. I think largely because it's so different and so unusual. But I will also admit, the idea of a tube preamplifier with big Macintosh solid state power had real allure for me, especially when I consider the price, which is £8,995, which of course is a lot of money. But it's not a lot of money when you compare to maybe the 352's bigger brother, the MA12000, because that costs nearly double. So the MA352 could be seen as a great value way in terms of getting into, you know, big Macintosh power type of sound, especially when you think about it being a hybrid. Because it's a hybrid, it has a superpower over every other solid state integrated amplifier. And of course, we'll get into that. But we need to start with the visual design, I think, because in the flesh, this is a much nicer looking integrated than it appears in photos. And from the side profile, with that flashy Macintosh writing, it's pretty quirky and pretty cool. But some will hate its looks, I think, because it's so different. And of course, some will be indifferent to the LED illuminated tubes, but I really don't mind it. And I really quite like the tube warm up process actually. I think it's pretty cool. And of course, you can turn the LEDs off if you want to be boring about it. Turning the Macintosh around, there are enough analog input connections for both single ended and balanced, with inputs for a moving magnet phono stage and two subwoofer outputs. However, strange to me are the speaker cable terminals being about halfway up the back of the amplifier, which doesn't really matter, but it definitely feels a little quirky or a little odd. Back to the front, there is a headphone amplifier that I didn't test for reasons explained in the video linked up the top there. And there are controls for five bands of tone controls or equalization, depending on how you look at it. And this could be really great for some audio files, whereas others will appreciate being able to disable them. But I have the same gripe with the tone controls for the MA352 as I mentioned in my previous review of the MA9500, the formidable integrated amplifier. And the, the tone controls are great, they work absolutely fine, but because the individual controls are smooth in their rotation, there's no clicks and there's no visual indication, you can spend a bit of time tuning the sound to be just perfect. And then when you clean the amplifier with a cloth, you move all those controls and you kind of have to start again. So I just think it would be better if the controls were maybe click orientated or if there was some kind of visual indication to be able to, you know, always set the controls back to where they were. And this seems like a minor niggle and it is a minor niggle, but when you're talking Macintosh amplifier prices, for a lot of audio files, these might be your forever amplifier. So if you think, you know, you've got to keep doing this every time you clean the amplifier, and you probably will because of that chrome design, it's just something I think, you know, just something to consider and to be mindful of, especially if you're OCD about dust. And in typical Macintosh amplifier fashion, this is a large footprint amplifier, but at just under 30 kilograms, it's not a heavy amplifier by Macintosh standards, and that is probably because it doesn't have the usual Macintosh autoformers. So that affects the power, which is 200 watts per channel into eight ohms and 320 watts per channel into four ohms. So having no auto formers is a really big difference actually here for the F352 compared to, definitely compared to the larger Macintosh amplifiers. But do we still get a typical Macintosh sound? And I think so, yes. I really do think it's very similar to other Macintosh amplifiers that I've had here for review, but it's also quite different. And I actually think this is probably my favorite sound-wise Macintosh amplifier that I've had here for review. And maybe it's just because there is great synergy between the Mac and the Sonos Faber Serafino speakers that I'm also reviewing at the moment. And of course, you would expect there to be great synergy. Of course you would. 
And to describe the MA352 sound is really pretty easy. It's smooth. Now let me say that again, it's smooth. It's effortless when you crank the volume. It's very grown up and sophisticated sounding. And by that I mean instruments and musical elements are positioned very nicely with exceptional composure, again, regardless of the volume. And for me, one of the key standout strengths sonically of the MA352 is the soundstage. Music often feels very beyond the speakers, very, very beyond the speakers at times. So that's three-dimensional, you know, three-dimensional sense, especially the way the rest of the sound is built up with the bass and everything. So very deep a lot of the time, but also when it's supposed to obviously come out to you at the, as the listener as well. But the setback aspect, I think, will definitely be a golden aspect of the, of the sound delivery or soundstage delivery for a lot of audio files. And then combined with that is also excellent or exceptional width to the sound. And that's interesting for me in this listening room because I had to have or have the Serafino speakers placed quite close to the side walls. And it's interesting with the right combination of equipment and definitely this amplifier in this instance, the walls kind of disappear and then elements to the sound, the width aspect of the sound stage, it still forms. You still get these big tangible instruments, people playing instruments or just sonic sounds very much outside the speakers, which again, for me in this listening room is kind of beyond the walls. So that's a really impressive overall 3D, very three dimensional sound stage with the second big strength being its bass delivery. The big power I'm sure helps with this, but bass is just really solid and controlled and it can go big, making the Serafino speakers sound almost subwoofer-like in my small room. Not real number 31 subwoofer-like, but maybe more normal subwoofer-like. And a lot of amplifiers I think would have enough power to give you a big bass, especially with the Serafino speakers, but not all of them will deliver bass in quite the same way as the Macintosh. I really like the bass quality from the 352 because it has a bit of character to it. The bass is solid and sure-footed and really controlled and authoritative, but at the same time, it has a little bit of softness, a little bit of roundedness and a bit of a bouncy, boppy character. And that just stands out to me because when we feel the bass notes with maybe an electric electronic music, it just just <laughs> gives you a slightly different sensation. But really it's not kind of the rhythm, the flow, and just the way bass underpins the rest of the music. It just has a little bit of extra character compared to maybe an amplifier that's all about speed and like, you know, kind of mechanical, sure-footed, start, stop, start, stop. That's not how the bass is from the 352. It has everything you want in terms of authority, but with a bit of extra character to it as well. And I just really, really like that about it. I think the next strength could also be a con for some, and that is the softness and smoothness to the sound. This is quite a romantic sounding amplifier in ways, especially in the vocal region, because they are really quite set back and they never become aggressive or hard or forward, at least not on the volume levels I could play at, which was always under halfway with the VU meters rarely hitting 20 watts. And that was loud playback. Interesting was the treble delivery because details were always presented clear and with the same composure and smoothness. And that means I could see some people finding it to be a little bit too smooth with some speakers. But again, I have to say the character of the treble, I just really liked. Lots of micro detail. And again, just with a bit of a softness and roundedness to them, a little bit of sweetness and a little bit of character. And the treble was definitely more delicate in its delivery as opposed to maybe whack, you know, like an attacking type of treble. So, you know, some will like that, some maybe won't, but it definitely makes for a listen to music very loud, all day type of sound. And there is definitely something in that. And then there is the superpower, which is your ability to change the tubes, to tune the sound. And that's not something that I did for this review, but it is something I would definitely do if I was an owner of this amplifier, partly because it's fun to do it and partly because I enjoy exploring sonic possibilities. But also I would do it because of the vocal delivery of this amplifier. Now, I think some of you would definitely love the vocal delivery from the 352 because it's everything that I've just mentioned about, you know, the strengths of the amplifier sound. So it sits back, a lot of the time sits back smooth and composed and graceful, never loses its composure, even, at, you know, loud volumes in this very three dimensional sound stage, all very, very impressive stuff. But the character of the vocals, yeah, there is definitely some. And you'll see, as I mentioned in a comparison shortly, there's definitely some character. But for me, 
The Macintosh sound, especially in the vocal delivery, I find to be a little bit vanilla in its flavor. But we need to be careful because vanilla is not a bad flavor. Vanilla is a very, you know, universal flavor. You can use vanilla in ice cream as much as you can use it maybe in a syrup for coffee. So vanilla is a very good flavor in a sense. It's, you can listen to a lot of different music with a vanilla type of flavor, and there's definitely something in that. So you can listen to all different styles of music with the Macintosh, no problem at all. But vanilla is maybe not quite as interesting as strawberry, and it's maybe not quite as indulgent as chocolate. So that's where the tube aspect, the tube pre aspect to this amplifier, the hybrid aspect really comes into its own. It really becomes a superpower because being able to ch change those tubes and tune the sound, I think given my recent experience of tube rolling would allow for you know someone to unlock that next level of sound for them as an individual. So for me, it would be trying to find even more special character from the vocal delivery of the Macintosh to go with everything else. Maybe a little bit more excitement to the sound and definitely some more vocal character. But being able to tube roll, being able to make those changes is definitely a superpower because it's not something you can do with normal or any other solid state integrated amplifier. And of course, I tested the moving magnet phono stage the best I could. And its sound seemed to mirror a lot of what I liked about the MA352, but in a more vague way. And when I compared it to the Avid Pelar phono stage, the Avid had much less of that smooth Macintosh sound. And instead, it seemed to focus more on clarity, overall and outright clarity. So in some ways, I preferred the Mac sound. In other ways, I preferred the Avid. But I think overall, the built-in phono stage into the Macintosh provided a more pleasing or just a better balanced sound with the amplifier's sound. But I didn't really go into huge deep vinyl testing here. So please take my findings or my comments here with a grain of salt. And this is a great time to talk about some comparisons. And my first comparison was with the Galleon TS120 SE tube amplifier. And this was the amplifier that showed to me extra character to the vocals from the Serafino speakers that I wasn't getting from the Macintosh. But that was specific to the tubes that I was using in the Galleon. And if you want to know more about all of this, then check out the Galleon review linked up the top there. But this comparison also showed to me the benefits of the power of the Macintosh for the bass delivery and also the size, scale and composure of the sound that was possible from the Serafino speakers, especially at louder volumes. In these areas, a very good tube amplifier was still very much outgunned. So next I compared it to a very powerful solid state integrated amplifier, the Lima Acoustics 2 Kana 2 Anniversary, which is a very honest upfront sound in solid state that is only half the price of the Macintosh, but with the right speakers, it can definitely hold its own with more expensive amplifiers. And this comparison was really interesting because the Lima sounded more neutral straight away and definitely more direct. And its bass was more light on its feet and punchy rather than deep rounded and sumptuous, like what you get and I really like from the Macintosh. And there was also less character to the music overall, which is interesting to me because it showed to me there was definitely some tubey character coming from the tube preamplifier in the Macintosh, which definitely gives music a more romantic sense of roundedness, grace, and ease. And there was definitely just more tension in the sound, that solid state amplifier tension in the sound from the Lima, whereas the Macintosh had more of that tubey sort of tubey sound, right? Definitely had more of that. So that was a really, really interesting comparison. And of course, the Macintosh is almost twice the price of the Lima. But given the Serafino speakers and the whole sound all rolled in, I definitely think the Macintosh, yeah, it's twice the money, but it was definitely the better choice of amplifier to use here to use with these speakers. So in conclusion then, I have to say the MA352 overall, it is an excellent amplifier and it's an excellent amplifier to listen to. It's very much a listen to music all day amplifier because it's so smooth and you can easily get lost in the music and it doesn't matter what type of music is playing either. It's really not very fussy. And I really like the Macintosh with electronic music. I think because of the bass, the way the bass is and then how 
The MA352 kind of romanticizes electronic music. It romanticizes the sound samples and how that then pulls you deep or pulled me deep into the music in an almost trance-like fashion, which is really, I suppose, the intention of a lot of electronic music. So yeah, it was a real star for me with electronic and I do listen to quite a lot of that music. So really, I think my only niggles with the MA352, when I really think about it, for its sonic delivery, I think I boil down to personal preference. Yeah, I wouldn't mind a bit more attack. You know, it's lovely to have smoothness, a little bit more attack. Wouldn't, you know, be the end of the world and then a bit more vocal character. Those would be personal preferences, but I think it's unfair to criticize a product for your own personal preference. Because when I actually think about how it's been designed, how the Macintosh has been designed, I think it's intentionally designed to be a bit more romantic, sounding sweet and easy going, but also big in power, rounded and fun in a way in, in the bass. But also with you know universal capability, yeah, being you know suitable to work with a lot of speakers, suitable to work with a wide selection of music. When I think about that as an intended goal, I think the Macintosh delivers in all of those areas, and it's actually very difficult to fault it in any way, really, for that type of sound. So if that type of sound is what you're looking for, this could be a great amplifier for you because I think it takes you a long way towards much bigger Macintosh amplifiers sound, but for a hell of a lot less money. So there's definitely something in that as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this review. I hope you found it useful and helpful. If you enjoyed it, please hit the thumbs up button. If you'd like to see more reviews like this, of course, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you all soon.